Hello, my fellow Nortel enthusiast. In this video, we're going to follow up on the previous video about installing a RAD, also known as a remote access device. I have a link here in the video if you haven't seen that uh, video, so you can get started there first. Anyway, so after we did the installation of the RAD hardware and we did the defaulting and the basic configuration setup, which was to create a password and a system ID, then we can load the software onto a PC. Uh, the software is called Norstar Remote Utilities, and you'll want version 10 or preferably 11. So you would go out on the internet and look for NRU 10 or 11. I'll give you a hint. There's a person named uh, Mike who runs a website called PBX Cookbook. Uh, I believe his website address is pbxbook.com. He's got a, a a free copy of it on his his site so I'm using XP I've never tried it on Windows 10 the reason I'm using XP is because this software came out in like the um, either the late 90s or early part of the of the beginning of the millennium and so it was really designed for you know for Windows 2000 uh, so anyway it does run fine on XP I haven't tried it on Windows 7 so when you install it, you've got a few tools here at your disposal. Uh, the most common one I discussed that you would use the RAD for is for a backup and a restore. So let's show you that. So there's a couple of ways you can get connected. You can either connect through a modem dial-up line, um, in which case you, your connector type would be remote or auto attendant, um, or there's operator assisted. But um, I use a serial connector. So in other words, to use a serial connector, you're going to choose direct. And it would mean that you would have to be physically, you know, on the site where the RAD was. And you would use your USB to serial connector to connect directly to the RAD. Uh, the default baud rate is 9600. Uh, you will need to put in that password, which I showed you how to set in the previous um, video. And so um, if you're going to use the modem, what you're going to do is you're going to choose remote, then you have to put in the phone number. It can be kind of tricky to get connected remote. And part of the reason I'm not going to go down that road is one, because I don't have, you know, the setup to, to do uh, a modem connection. And two is that um, I find that modem dial-up lines are becoming fewer, uh, you know, people aren't using them as much. And, and, and so... Is there a way to connect via the network? I don't think so. Uh, there may be, but there's no option here to connect via IP across like a like a VPN tunnel. All right, so let's click connect. Oh, I screwed something up there. What I meant to do was choose COM port four. That's my that's the connector I need. Yeah, make sure you get your appropriate COM port there. One, two, three. Okay, here we go. So now it's reaching out to the RAD. All right, now it's connected to the RAD. Okay, so now I get a prompt to do a backup. Um, so the backup, let me just give you a few words of advice here. Uh, on a big system, a backup can take up to an hour, maybe even two hours. And you do not want to do that during business hours because it will interrupt the call flow. So the best time to run that is at the end of the day. And, um, you know, what I noticed when I found out the hard way is that when you're running the backup is at first everything's fine. And then about midway through the backup, calls start getting cut off. And, of course, you start getting yelled at. So if you do a backup during business hours, it will interrupt the call, call you know, the, the phone lines. All right. So this is really fairly easy. You just, uh, you just say, okay, I want to backup system programming. And then you say uh, backup now, and then it reaches in and it starts pulling down all the programming. Okay, so the main takeaway here is that it's it's doing a backup of all the system program, including the phone preferences. So if you have a lot of phones, that's what can take a while. Uh, as an example, I did a um, a system that had about 50 telephones, um, and it took about an hour and a half to back that up. Same thing with the restoration. It, it, for whatever amount, whatever amount of time it takes to, to back up, it's going to take about the same amount of time to do a restore. All right, rather than sitting here and watching this whole backup, just let me explain that it's backing up the software. It's placing into that directory that I just, you know, that we had right here in the, in the little dialog box, you know, Nortel, Nortel Network slash 
icsrt slash backup. So I'm going to stop this. And then also, you know, there's a, the ability to do, um, there's, there's the ability to do a restore. And the restore is just the opposite. I mean, you know, here's the backup. Here's the restore. Restore system programming. Browse to the location, which is, just happens to be the same directory. Do restore now. Um, anything about the res restoration? Uh, oh, yeah. The reason you would want to do a backup restore is because a lot of these NOR stars are, are dropping their memories. So if the power goes out for, say, more than, you know, half hour or something, when they're coming back up, they're coming back up with completely empty programming. So doing a backup is a preemptive strike and then you can restore from backup. Now, if this is happening frequently, the other thing you can do is you can get another software cartridge with a new battery in it and replace that and then restore. Um, also, you'll want to get a software cartridge that's got the same type of software. So if you look up here in the little top of my um, top of my window here, it'll say uh, MICS-XC 6.1. So that tells me what version of software I've got. So if I was if I was having that problem, I would go out into the marketplace, which anymore is pretty much either your your aftermarket gray resellers or your um, or eBay is always a good resource, and find a software cartridge that's new that's got that same type of software, so that I could restore to a new cartridge. All right, let me show you some other cute little toys this thing comes with. So just because I closed that dialog box does not close the connection. So the connection is still open. Um, there's this thing called remote set tools. Um, it's, it, to me, it's just cute. I don't really find anything useful about it. Uh, you know, if I was going to program a system, I would just go find, you know, a real hard telephone to do this with. Um, it pops up this thing that looks like a soft phone, except that it does not have any voice. It doesn't have any audio, so you can't make phone calls on it. I mean, you can make a phone call on it, but there won't be any audio. So I suppose it could be handy for a little bit of testing, um, but it's basically just a functional 7310. It just doesn't have the ability to to, to talk on. Uh, I think the the idea they envisioned here was that this is something you could use for for quick programming. Now, if you did have a modem connection, maybe that would make sense that you would you would use that as a way to um, to to program. Okay. Lastly, there's this thing called a browser tool. And that does give you complete access to all the programming. So if you were using a remote connection, this would probably be the way you would make programming changes. Now, for me personally, if I was on site, I don't think I would really bother with this. I would just, I would just go to a, a phone and, and do the programming. But you can access, you know, all the programming. See, here's all the lines, and you know, here's the terminals. My mouse is acting weird here. Come on, you. There we go. And there's all my terminals. And you can go into a terminal and, you know, the things you would normally find in phone system programming when you're going through the phone. I When I first got this tool, I tried using this as a way to to do programming when I was on site, but I found that it, was, it wasn't it was any faster. It was easier just to, to uh, do the programming through the telephone set. Okay. All right. So that is the North Star Remote Utilities. Uh, again, go look on the internet for NRU10 or NRU11. Also put the letters GA next to it. So NRU11GA. GA stands for um, General Availability. And um, and like I said, there's there's a guy who runs a website called PBX Cookbook uh, that uh, has copy of, has a copy of the software on there. All right. So hope that helps you out. Thanks for watching.